from uh, from uh, to 9/11. Uh, there's so much to talk about, so much to think about, and uh, I thank you for having me You're here. Telling us their story, we are telling you what we want, and you give a nice recherche of what that you've done. That's not what we want. The point is, we want more of our voice and our needs and our country back. And you guys are not doing it. You're not giving us our country back. You are just.
marine waves, tides, you can't sell the sun. You can make a lot of money on the infrastructure and then putting it in, but once it's in, they can't sell it. And that's why they are pushing ethanol. And there are food riots in 25 countries this month because they're not getting enough corn because we, rich people, are putting it in our cars to burn it up, you know, this, so that ATM, and I saw this, James Wolsey, he was the former head of the CIA under Bush, at these several energy meetings saying, ethanol, ethanol, he's being paid by the big food corporations. Now, democracy, we don't have it. We did not have a debate during the presidential campaign. They kept Kucinich out of the debate. They had a health care debate where he was the only one for not for profit. He wasn't in the debate. It was on uh, public television. It was sponsored by the, you know, the medical insurance company. I mean, it was like crazy. He was for getting out of Iraq. He was for impeachment. He was for no Star Wars. He was for getting rid of nuclear weapons. We never heard from the guy. And who made the decision? The, Republic, the Republicans and the, and the well, what the hell I say? It's the, the, the media. The Republicans and the Democrats, but it's really the, the Republicans and the Republicans, you know. Because, because they're all owned by the corporate Established. And this is what we're up against here. We have to be honest about it. And uh, Congresswoman Maloney, with all due respect, that we have to go to Congress. I mean, we, we don't have the media. It's locked up. The, the presidential debates used to be run by the legal women voters. Now it's run by the two corporate owned parties. And they tell us the, 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 how much we can hear. And yes, we'll have a kinder, gentler empire with Obama or Clinton, but it'll still be the empire. I mean, they're, they're not committed to really getting out of the way. I mean, that's not in there. So now, we had an ending to this program where I was going to introduce a bunch of people, but I'm going to truncate it. Barbara Harris is here from Code Pink. She has some information about counter-recruitment, which is probably one of the most successful pieces of the piece of how to call on Barbara. David McReynolds from the World Institute is not here, but they have a civil disobedience program, and I can uh, just announce it. Um, and I want uh, Al to speak very briefly about why it's not too late for impeachment. We had this great uh, essay by David Swanson about, it only takes a couple of months from the time it started, you know, like, so we say it's too late, but that's not true. Okay, so Barbara. Oh, okay. I just want to make it real quick because um, as Daniel said, if you want to have a sense of accomplishment, you know, we want to change the world. I mean, my heart is ready to be seen. I don't know if you're there. Um, we all want to end the afternoon to bring the troops home. We have to start somewhere, and counter recruitment is a great place to start because the military recruiter, as Daniel said, I just in the school and outside the school. <laughs> and they claim lies and misleading information for our youth, our children, our grandchildren. We're all concerned. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and uh, there's something you can do uh, because of the No Child Left Behind Act. You probably know about it. The little section in there that mandates that recruiters have access to schools. Mandates that names, address, and phone numbers of all our children, all the youth, is sent to a military database. An ASVAB test, career planning test, is given in the schools uh, under the uh, guise of helping kids plan their careers. But what comes out of it is that the military gleans so much information about the students, not only name, address, phone number, but ethnicity, interests, clubs, so that when they call them up to make friends with them and try to entice them to go out to Starbucks and let's talk about it and the opportunities you're going to have by being in the military, they can be your friend and they, their marketing plan is amazing and the bottom line of it is to sign the contract. And if we can save one kid, each one of us, from enlisting, from knowing the truth about recruitment, the promises 
and what the facts are about money for education or skill building, there are no skills anymore, it's all out, outsourced. And that there are options, of course it's our responsibility to offer options to kids. Because the recruiters, honestly, are in the most targeted neighborhoods in New York. They're in East Harlem, where we are recruiting stations. They're in Harlem on the Lower East Side. They know who's vulnerable. They know who needs an out. They know who could, could join and would join. They promise everything from making a hip hop record to citizenship. And just talking to the kids, giving them out that and some in the back, Meeting with parents, if anyone knows a parent is involved in the school, teachers, guidance counselor, even a principal might be sitting in the room that we can speak to and bring the information into the school. And I know the vets come and speak in the school as well. It makes a difference. Kids know and they don't want this war, but they don't know what else to do when they graduate. Not every kid is, knows how to get into college or knows what to do and we want to offer them some options. We have programs, go on the grannypeacebrigade.org website, or War Resisters website, or UMPJ website, and you'll get so much information. Uh, just contact us, and I'll help you out to get started, and join us, and you can make a difference. You can say to kids. And they're really targeting young women. And then literature on the back table, if you want to get back to Barbara. And I want to tell you that the War Resisters is doing an organizer training institute for civil disobedience, the ending the war, and there uh, it'll be during the summer, and their website is warresistors.org. So check them out if you want to get involved in civil disobedience. Uh, and Okay, thank you all for hanging with us tonight. I promise I'll be as brief as possible. Uh, we need to continue to work for impeachment as well as to an end of the occupation of Iraq, and we should be doing both in tandem. According to former federal prosecutor Elizabeth De La Vega, the Bush administration engaged in nothing less than a criminal conspiracy to deceive the American public and Congress into supporting the attack on Iraq, and she's in good company. In December of 2005, John Conyers, the current chair of the House Judiciary Committee, then serving as ranking member in the minority, issued a report that concluded there was a prima facie case that the Bush administration had violated a number of federal laws in relation to Iraq, including committing fraud against the United States. A little over a year ago, Congressman Dennis Kucinich introduced an impeachment resolution against Vice President Cheney, making essentially the same charge, and in addition charging the President with threatening aggression against Iraq without any tangible evidence of an Iranian threat to the United States. Most recently, Representative Robert Wexler and several co-signers have sent a letter to Chairman Conyers requesting the commencement of an impeachment investigation against Vice President Cheney. Now, we've been told tonight by some and elsewhere that it's too late to begin impeachment proceedings. But PDA board member David Swanson has recently pointed out that the entire proceeding against Bill Clinton took about four months. We've been told that impeachment's a distraction, it'll unite the Republicans and harm the Democratic electoral prospects. We have been told that the remedy for Bush's crimes is to get a Democrat elected to the White House in 2009. These arguments are nothing more than dodges by a Democratic congressional leadership that is either unwilling or afraid to do its duty under the Constitution. It's, it's duty to hold an investigation into the charges of high crimes and misdemeanors against the Bush administration leveled by an increasing number of their own colleagues in addition to countless other authoritative voices in the public realm. There is a principle involved here that is higher than the near-term political fortunes of the Democratic Party. No elected official should be allowed to flout the law the way Bush and Cheney have. No president or vice president should be allowed to express the kind of contempt for the American people and a co-equal branch of government that Bush and Cheney have been allowed to express. If Congress is unwilling to hold Bush and Cheney accountable, then we are going to have to hold Congress accountable. Yeah. 
All right, and there are some suggestions for things we can do in that regard. We may want to run primary challenges against members of the Judiciary Committee that have been stalling action on the Kucinich bill and others who have promised us action on impeachment but have failed to deliver. Um, you know, it's a possibility. The other thing that we want to seriously think about is getting as many impeachment resolutions and passed wherever we can. There was recently a resolution uh, passed by the uh, New Hampshire Democratic Party, I believe. Uh, there's probably an upcoming New York State Convention. We may want to try to get something done there. It might be a little bit more difficult, but the City Council, your local Democratic Club, anywhere. But the most important fact on both of these issues, on impeachment and ending the occupation of Iraq, is that all of the various fractions on the left and elsewhere, all the different sects, parties, tendencies, they have got to come together and get united and organized on this issue to put the maximum amount of consistent pressure on Congress in order to have any hope of achieving these goals. And with that, I conclude. get somebody on the ballot to run against him. So we're looking for somebody articulate that will take, take a stab and go up against Malva. And it can be any registered Democrat in New York State. I'm putting it out there. We're still looking for someone to volunteer. <coughs> no, they don't. The rules have changed. OK. okay. Well, it must be time to quit them. <laughs> Um, real quick, the PDA inside-outside strategy, it's real simple. We work within the Democratic Party and all of the other groups who are here tonight, Code Pink, Grannies, War Resisters League, we want to work with you on all the issues that have been brought up. Um, I hope to do that, convening a meeting going forward with the, the CD Point people within PDA. Um, second point is, if you haven't already done so, please go up to the PD America, PDA, so it's pdamerica.org website and sign the healthcare not warfare petition. That's for single payer uh, healthcare, uh, written by John Conyers, HR 676. And lastly, um, actually this is not a PDA issue, but it's a, an issue that hasn't been raised here and that's vital to our democracy. Teresa Hommel of whereisthepaper.org, who has been uh, a real champion in defending our right for free elections and to vote, asked me to make a plug that the New York City Board of Elections is actually going to be hiring 8,000 poll workers to um, administer to people who have disabilities the new computerized electronic ballots. And you know, the issue is that she raises is, is it going to be us who are going to be providing this assistance who really have a concern, or is it going to be somebody else? So if you go up to the New York City Board of Elections website, there's an application form and you can volunteer for that. Um, with that, I just want to thank again all of our speakers. Um, tremendous job, so let's give them another great big round of applause.